Hi, I'm Christopher Helmersh, and I'm excited to show you all Warp Factory, a new toolkit for warp drive research that numerically analyzes and optimizes arbitrary warp drive geometries. Our team is a collaboration between myself and Jared Fuchs at the University of Alabama Huntsville, and Alexi Bobrick, Brandon Melker, Luke Sellers, and Gianni Martire with the Advanced Propulsion Lab at Applied Physics. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief background on the concepts of general relativity and warp drives, then I'll explain the Warp Factory code base and show several examples of analyzing and optimizing warp drives using Warp Factory. At the heart of general relativity is the metric tensor, which describes the curvature of space and time, and the stress energy tensor, which describes the energy needed to create that curvature. These two tensors are connected by a set of complicated partial differential equations called the Einstein field equations. On the left, we have the metric tensor, which is shown as a 4x4 symmetric matrix. It's built from different functions, including the lapse rate, which describes the passage of time, the shift vector, which describes the relative motion of space, and the spatial and shear terms, which describe how space expands, contracts, and shears. Through the Einstein field equations, the metric is turned into the stress energy tensor on the right, which is also a 4x4 symmetric matrix. The top left component describes the energy density that is present in space, the upper row is the momentum densities, which describe how the energy density flows, and the other terms describe the pressure and shear stresses. Something important to note is that the stress energy tensor is not invariant, which means that different observers traveling at different velocities will see different energy densities, momentum densities, and pressures. The next question is, what is a warp drive? Well, it turns out that using the shift vector term of the metric tensor, you can make a metric that has a region where space itself is moving. For our definition, we consider those metrics warp drives if they meet two conditions. One, passengers inside the warp bubble are dragged along with it so that they move with space, not through it. And two, passengers inside the bubble see a passenger volume or a region of flat space around them. These bubbles could potentially move at very high velocities allowing for fast interstellar travel. However, to date, all proposals for warp drives have had unphysical qualities. For example, having regions of negative energy density. We describe physicality in terms of energy conditions, which are constraints on how energy behaves as seen by different observers. Some of these energy conditions are shown in the table on the right. In this presentation, we'll focus on the top two, the Eulerian energy density and the weak energy condition. Developing warp drives requires solving the Einstein field equations. In practice, this is challenging to do analytically, which often means that only simpler metrics are analyzed, or that the energy conditions are evaluated with a limited set of observers. These difficulties motivated our team to develop a warp factory, a numerical solver for general metrics that overcomes some of the limitations of analytical approaches. It provides reliable computation of the stress energy tensor, multi-observer validation of energy conditions, and full 3D visualizations to aid our understanding of warp drives. Warp Factory is made of several modules, written in MATLAB. We have a solver module that uses finite difference methods for solving the Einstein field equations at each point in a 4D grid of space-time, an analyzer module that evaluates the energy conditions, and an optimizer module that uses a perturbation approach for generating entirely new metrics. The most famous warp drive metric, the Alcubierre metric, is a spherically symmetric solution that uses a single shift vector in the direction of travel. After we've solved this metric for the stress energy tensor, we can evaluate the Eulerian energy density and the weak energy condition. As you can see, the Alcubierre metric is highly unphysical, since both the Eulerian energy density and the weak energy condition are negative. The metric was built with a velocity of just one-tenth the speed of light, which means the metric's unphysicality is not a result of faster than light travel, but just a property of the metric itself. Another cool feature of Warp Factory is providing unique visualizations of the stress energy tensor components. On the right is an animation of the momentum flow lines for the Alcubierre metric. What you're seeing are the different terms of the momentum flow components as a vector field, with the flow lines showing the motion of energy in the warp bubble. This shows an interesting feature of this warp drive, which is a circulation effect around the regions of highest energy density. Following Alcubierre, Vandenbroek considered a modification that added an expansion term to the passenger volume, making it bigger on the inside than on the outside. He thought this would allow for a more efficient warp drive by reducing the energy requirements for a given passenger volume size. 
Evaluating this metric, we find that this addition of expansion inside creates an inner positive energy ring surrounded by an outer negative energy ring. The weak energy condition similarly has more rings of violation corresponding to the different boundaries of the shift and expansion terms of the metric. These added regions in turn cause a more complicated momentum flow structure. The outer momentum flow exhibits a circulation similar to Alcubierre, and closer to the passenger volume, another opposite flow occurs around the expansion region. Last year, Bobrick and Martyr at Applied Physics published a paper that considered several modifications to improve on Alcubierre-like warp drives. One of these proposals was using a modified lapse rate, or the passage of time inside the passenger volume. The result is a metric with very similar Eulerian energy density to Alcubierre, but without the weak energy condition violation in the inner region of the bubble. The momentum flow lines are similar to Alcubierre, exhibiting the same circulation behavior. While the addition of a modified lapse rate does not solve all issues of the energy condition violation, it does help reduce it in certain regions. This suggests that a modification of the lapse rate might be helpful in future metrics. Most recently, a new metric was proposed by Lentz, which takes a radical departure from an Alcubierre-like spherically symmetric solution. Instead, it creates a rhomboid-like shift vector in both the x and z dimensions. The motivation for this comes from his observation that the negative Eulerian energy density of the Alcubierre bubble was a direct result of the single spherically symmetric shift vector component. The addition of two different shift vectors could allow for solutions that require zero or positive Eulerian energy. This removes one source of weak energy condition violation, since it may require zero Eulerian energy density even for superluminal travel. Our team has recreated a version of the Lentz metric in Warp Factory to investigate this further. Like Lentz, we find this kind of shift vector creates zero Eulerian energy density across nearly all shift vector regions. We also find that in our version of the metric, a few areas of negative energy density still exist around the corners of the different shift vector zones. However, this is probably a limitation on how we constructed the corners of the metric, which might be able to be modified with more information. While the removal of most of the negative energy density seems promising, unfortunately, the weak energy condition is still violated. The reason for this is that the weak energy condition takes into account many observers, and different observers see different energy densities. While there is non-negative energy as seen by stationary observers, moving observers see the pressure and other terms of the stress energy tensor affecting their observation of the energy, ultimately resulting in net negative energy densities. These violations exist at all boundaries of the shift vector regions where pressure, momentum flux, and shear stresses exist from the point of view of the stationary observers. Therefore, the Lentz metric will need additional modification to meet the criteria of the weak energy condition. This is one example where Warp Factory serves as a useful tool for analyzing complicated metrics to reveal important aspects of their physicality. A final unique capability of Warp Factory is the ability to harness machine learning to search for new, more physical warp drives. These changes to the metric modify the stress energy tensor, and therefore the energy conditions. If these changes result in improvement, the changes to the metric are accepted. This process continues cycling through the metric functions. The animation on the top right shows an example of this process occurring with the evolution of the shift vector on the left and its impact on the Eulerian energy density on the right. These perturbations can be run in parallel using a genetic algorithm, the population of metrics undergoes random starting mutations and are then optimized in parallel. After a certain number of optimization iterations, the best metric from each population is taken and mutated again to create the next population for optimization. This parallelization approach makes it much faster than running a single optimization, and the random mutations help it avoid local minima. In summary, Warp Factory provides a powerful tool for researchers developing warp drive metrics. It allows us to numerically explore the space of physical warp drives for arbitrary metrics. It allows for a reliable analysis of physicality through the evaluation of energy conditions across many observers. It allows for unique visualizations of metrics and stress energy tensors, including momentum flows. And finally, it allows for the intelligent optimization of warp drives through a perturbation approach. The next step for our team is to prepare Warp Factory for public release. We will also continue the exploration of proposed metrics in the warp literature and continue running optimizations on these metrics using Warp Factory. Thank you for your time.